Victor Dean here. Today's training tip is going to be about creatine. This happens to be an area that I focused on in my master's degree in nutrition. So creatine, when you take it exogenously, gets stored in your muscle. It's there anyway, but when you take more of it, you store more of it. And it gets phosphorylated, so it becomes creatine phosphate. Where most people's understanding of creatine lies is in this ATP regeneration concept. So you have ATP, adenosine triphosphate, you split off a phosphate and the energy that's released from that is the energy that you use to lift weights, to uh, brush your teeth, to itch your eyebrow, all of that. And so when this splits off, you're left with ADP, adenosine diphosphate. So creatine phosphate comes in, donates a phosphate back, and now you have adenosine triphosphate again. So a weight that you can normally lift eight times if you start taking exogenous creatine, you might be able to lift 10 times now. And so there's some direct performance enhancements that, that can come from taking creatine supplements. Uh, and it's unfortunate that this is where most people's understanding of creatine stops. Um, leaving out lots of cool stuff, namely, the idea uh, that creatine increases glycogen synthase. So there's an enzyme on the surface of your muscle cells called glycogen synthase that pumps sugar from your bloodstream into the muscle cell. And sugar is the primary fuel that we use for high intensity activity, like lifting weights or sprinting up a flight of stairs or performing an athletic event. Um, and so when you take creatine, this enzyme multiplies and works harder. So your muscle swells up with sugar water. So now you have more fuel on board to perform these, these events. So there's an obvious benefit there. So you can last longer, perform harder. Um, there's an, another benefit in, in the water storing uh, you know, side effect as well. Some people say, well, creatine just makes me hold water. And this is partially true, but it's not the, the bad water weight like you know, from too much sodium because you ate chicken wings the night before or something like that. It's not extracellular water, it's intracellular water within the muscle. The muscle swelled up with water. And this gives you a biomechanical advantage in and of itself, just having muscles that are swelled up with water. So you'll be stronger just from that. Um, and the last thing to really talk about here is what nutritionists call nutrient partitioning. It's a fancy way to say, I want to direct the carbohydrates I eat to a specific place in my body. I want to, I want to partition those nutrients to, to a place that I want them to go. And in this case, we're saying I want to put those carbohydrates in my muscle and I don't want to gain body fat. Um, so we said when you take creatine, glycogen synthase multiplies and your muscle swells up with sugar water because you're pumping that sugar from your blood into your muscle. Well, if it's going into your muscle, where is it not going? Into your fat. So in this way, creatine supplementation can be beneficial for men and women uh, in terms of gaining muscle mass for all the reasons there's previously, previously stated, the biomechanical advantage of having muscles that are swelled up, having more fuel on board, all of that, but also can help you in losing body fat or at least keeping your body fat low when you're in, you know, in a calorie surplus trying to gain muscle mass. So if you're trying to gain muscle while staying lean, creatine and the nutrient partitioning uh, side effects of it um, can be very beneficial for, for men and women. So how does creatine work? Now you know.